are going to learn about King Solomon and wisdom. Wisdom. But first, let's review our books of the Bible, shall we? Yay! Yeah. Right, Glenda. Can you help us, Matthew? Let's okay. sing the song. Oh, yes. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. From the top. One, two, three. Genesis and Exodus, the big kiss of numbers. Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. First and second Samuel, the Kings and the Chronicles. And now we're going to stop because our stories about wisdom and King Solomon are found in First Kings. Before we go to story time, let's worship the Lord with some music. Okay guys, we're going to worship. Let's do some music. So first let's read in Philippians a little bit. In chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Can you guys say rejoice? Rejoice! Rejoice! rejoice. Be happy. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Do you know what the sign language sign for peace is? This? Everyone say peace. peace. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a few for the song, okay? I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. So first it's peace, then it's love. This is sign for love. Just cross your heart. I've got love like an ocean. So ocean, ocean waves up and down both hands. Love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. And the very last one, so first it's peace, then love, then joy. So J sign language is this, but we're going to do this is joy. Joy. I've got joy like a fountain. It's like water's coming out. Yeah. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Let's try with the music. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river. Solomon, right? 
right? So, who was King David's son? Solomon. King Solomon. So, David got old, and King Solomon became a new king. So, he died. And God came to him in a dream. And God said, Truly ask in a dream. Yeah, ask anything, and I'll give it to you, Solomon. Mm -hmm. And guess what Solomon asked for? Wisdom! Wisdom! Yes, he asked for wisdom. And the Bible says that he wanted wisdom to lead the people of Israel. In order to lead, we need to follow the Lord's commandments. And God was so happy with King Solomon that he said, You didn't ask for these, but I'm still going to give you fame and wisdom and money. And I'm going to bless you. So King Solomon was very happy. He was so wise. Another story that you're going to hear in the video you watch is about two moms that came to King Solomon and asked about a baby. But listen to the story because I don't want to reveal everything to you. Okay? So listen to the story and what King Solomon does to show his wisdom. And now he found out who the true mom of the baby was. At the end of Solomon's life, though, he had um, some wives that worshipped other idols. So at the very end, he did make some mistakes. But overall, he had a lot of wisdom and he followed the Lord. Let's listen to the video, okay? Okay. King David was a ruler of Israel. And he was a great believer in God. During his rule as the king, Israel grew ten times larger than what it was under King Saul's rule. But now, King David was old and sick. He was tired of ruling such a large kingdom. David had many sons, and one of them was Adonijah. Even though his name meant my Lord is God, Adonijah was not a good man. He claimed to the people of Israel that one day he would rule the kingdom. He even tried to steal his father's throne, knowing that King David was too weak to resist him. But that was not God's plan for Israel and its people. David's wife, Bathsheba, knew that her son Solomon should become the king of Israel. She informed David about Adonijah's plan and immediately David gathered all his leaders and declared Solomon as the new king of Israel. Soon David fell very ill. Before his death, he said to his people, Believe in Solomon. He is the one chosen by God to be your king. The people of Israel believed what David said. After his father's death, King Solomon sat on the throne and firmly established the Israel kingdom once again. During his rule, King Solomon remembered the one advice that his dead father gave to him. He had said, Always follow God's path and you shall prosper in everything that you do. One night, God appeared in Solomon's dream. He asked him, If I grant you one wish, what would you ask for? You may ask for anything that you want. O oh Lord, give me wisdom to be a good king. That's all I ask for. Solomon's request pleased God, and he granted his wish along with great honor and riches. One day, two mothers came to King Solomon for justice. One of them fell to his feet and cried. This woman's son died in the night and she switched her dead baby with me. She took away my living baby. No, I did not switch the babies. The dead baby is yours and the one that is alive is mine. It was difficult for Solomon or anyone to tell which of them was speaking the truth. However, 
He soon had a plan. He called out for a sword. Bring me a sword. One of his soldiers followed his orders and immediately brought him a sword. Solomon said, Now divide the baby into half. Give one half to each of them. The entire court was silent. The real mother of the living baby cried out, Oh my Lord, please do not kill my baby. Give her my child. Let him be divided. He shall be neither yours nor mine. King Solomon immediately knew who the real mother was. He ordered his soldier. Give the baby to the first woman. I know she is the real mother. The people of Israel were very happy with Solomon's judgment. They understood that God's wisdom was in him. The people of Israel had no temple to worship God. When David decided to build a temple for his people, God had appeared to him and said, It is your son who will build the house in my name. So, when Solomon became the king, he started building a wonderful temple for God. It took seven long years to complete the temple. But the day had arrived when Solomon gathered all his people and dedicated the temple to the Lord. The people and the king offered their prayers and thousands of sacrifices to God in the temple. They even held a great feast which lasted for two weeks. One day after this, God appeared to Solomon once again. He promised to bless Solomon and his people if they continued to obey God. Sadly, neither the king nor his people obeyed God all the time. While Solomon wasted his time disobeying God, one of his officers, Jeroboam, had a strange experience. One day, Jeroboam met a prophet who said, God will soon be dividing Solomon's kingdom for disobeying him, and you will rule over ten of the twelve tribes. Hearing this from the prophet, Jeroboam quickly escaped to Egypt, knowing that Solomon would kill him if he stayed. Years passed, and Solomon grew old. Finally, he died. His son Rehoboam sat on the throne after his father's death, and he taxed the people even worse than what his father did. This angered the tribes, and ten of them rebelled against him. Solomon's kingdom got divided into two, and the ten tribes chose Jeroboam as their king, just as the prophet had said. We hope you liked the video, so now we're going to ask you some questions. Question number one. Why did King Solomon order to cut the baby in half? Matthew. The they were testing a mom who was the real mom. Yes. King Solomon wanted, wanted to find out who the real mother was. He wasn't really going to hurt the baby. He just wanted to see the reaction of the moms. What did God give Solomon? Wisdom. Wisdom! Yes. So, Glenda, where can we read to find more wisdom? In the books of the Bible. The books of the Bible. Like James and Proverbs, mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. Those are all great. Yes, thank you, Glenda. Question number three. Why did God divide King Solomon's kingdom? I know, I know. Yes, Glenda. Because he was disobedient. Mm -hmm. And he started following idols. Yeah, at the very end of King Solomon's life, he let his um, relationships lead him astray. So he wasn't faithful to the Lord. All right, good job. You guys paid attention.
Okay, so let's begin. It's hopscotch. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. Psalm 119.2. It's the same one from last week. So we can keep practicing. It's your turn, Matthew. 3, 2, 1. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek with him all their heart. Psalms 119. Two. There you go. I think that we can learn a lot from these stories from King Solomon about wisdom. Let's read in 1 Kings chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 5. I'll give you a few seconds to grab your Bible. Ready, kids and parents? Ready! Okay. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God asked, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued his great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on the throne. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. He was pretty humble, wouldn't you say? He was humble to yes. say, Yes. I need help. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? And what was the Lord's response? I don't know. What was it? He was pleased. The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for, the, for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never be anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal or no kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. Wow! So Glenda, we can learn a lot from King Solomon if we obey I mean, there's, there's consequences to everything. If you're, if you're choosing right, things will go well. If you're choosing wrong, things will not go well. So um, what is wisdom? What do you think wisdom is? It's knowing what's right. Yeah, it's choosing what's right. It's having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Prudence, making good decisions. Now, Glenda, if you saw a hole in front of you, let's say there's a huge hole, would you just keep walking? No, of course not. Why? I would go around. I'd fall in otherwise. Yeah. So wisdom is being able to apply that knowledge. If you see danger in front of you, if you see something that's not going to be good, you're not going to keep going and fall in. You have to go around. Right? Yes. So um, in James 1.5, it says, Now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously without criticizing, and it will be given to him. So we can pray for wisdom. Yes. Isn't that awesome? It's wonderful. Yeah. I know you told me, Glenda, that you pray for wisdom and discernment all the time. And yeah. That's great. Kids and parents, we should be praying for wisdom. Why is wisdom so important? So here are a few things. We need wisdom to honor God. We need to be able to walk away from danger or temptation. Wisdom is useless unless you apply it. So here are three things. Who do we get wisdom from? Three, three people. God, number one. We can ask God to give us wisdom. Number two, from loving parents, friends, and family. We can get wisdom from them. Three, we can get wisdom from Christian leaders, like pastors. Yeah. Like Pastor John David. Like uh, Pastor um, Jonathan. We can get wisdom from pastors' wives, from our Bible study leaders, from our teachers, right? Where there's more counsel, that's where plan will succeed. So I just want to encourage you guys to read the word, 
hang out with other Christian friends, and ask the Lord to give you wisdom. Yes, to walk with the wise. Walk with the wise. Can you show me a good walk? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. Well, guys, we're going to pray, but first I want to ask Glenda. Glenda, what you learned today? We learned about King Solomon. All right, what about King Solomon? About how wise he was. That's right, we learned about wisdom. Walk with the wise. Yeah. Walk with the wise. Well, let's pray. Let's pray for, for all the kids watching us. Pray for the parent families. Let's go to the Lord. God, we thank you. We praise you uh, for what you've done today, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here, to be able to bless the children, bless the families, bless the parents. Lord, we pray for our, our city, our nation, God, our leaders, Lord. We pray for our churches uh, all over the world, uh, ministering to families, ministering to kids, ministering to parents, ministering to everyone, Father. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here every week and for uh, allowing people to watch and be uh, ministered to through this, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, and Lord, let this be a blessing unto everyone. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll see you next week. Bye. We just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that you're learning more about the Bible, about the Lord. So some shout outs to Lola, to Jose, Angelique, Ashley, Juanito, Renata, Ever, Mia, Victoria, um, Victoria, Andy's sister, Melinda, Andy, Melanie. Thank you guys so much for watching. HR, thank you all the pastors. Thank you, Xiomara. Um, do you guys have any people you want to thank? You could go. Yeah! Hi, Abby! Hi, Liam! Hi, Zach! Hi, Zoe! Hi, Dad! <laughs> do you have anyone you want to say hi to? Hi, Peter! Hi, Cassie! Hi, um, Tia Lili! Hi, Raquel! Hi, Benji and Elias! Hi! Thank you guys for watching! Oh, 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 oh,